Young, who is the Vice President for Higher Education at the National Union of Students, and Emran Nian, Director of the Social Market Foundation. Welcome to both of you. Um, Megan, first of all, couldn't you argue that the fact this is costing so much money shows the taxpayer is taking the strain of this system rather than the student? Um, I think what's really clear from, from this, this uh, committee report is that actually um, the, the current system is, is, is being funded by public uh, money, is that the government is actually funding it at the wrong end of the system instead of funding, uh, funding it at the, uh, instead of funding students to go through the system, they're actually just writing debt off at their end and when this, um, this, got, this uh, system could end up actually costing the government more. Uh, than the previous system, which is what NUS has been arguing for the last four years. I mean, it's true now we've had the report saying that it's close to reaching the tipping point, where it is going to cost um, the taxpayer and the government uh, more. 45% uh, of loans taken out will never be repaid, um, close to the 48.6% threshold, at which point experts say the government loses money. Well, these are all forecasts, and they're forecasts that were generated at the bottom of the economic uh, recession. Um, as we go into an economic recovery, these figures will start to look, um, in my view, a whole lot better. Um, and the other thing, of course, is that <coughs> these figures are based on forecasts. There is still plenty of, if you like, policy flexibility for government in how it can control the future cost of student loans. Ah, what, what um, sort of so flexibility are you talking in, about? So, so when the new tuition fees were brought in, uh, which still means that the system, of course, is free at the point of use. Megan referred to the government not funding students on the way in, but of course they are funded on the way in. The system is free at the point of use. Um, so what happened in 2010 is that the threshold at which student loans start to be repaid was increased from £15,000 to £21,000, mm -hmm. um, a very progressive move for low-income graduates but increases the cost of the system. And what can happen in the future is you can freeze that threshold for a number of years and that would massively reduce the cost of these student loans. Now, do you accept that we've been in an economic downturn, growth has returned, there is still wage restraint and it's certainly not outstripping prices, but eventually the system will start to pay for itself? Uh, I think what's really clear is that this system is unfair and it's unsustainable. Um, and predictions say that by 2030, uh, this system will have added 94 billion to net public sector debt. What do you say to that? I, I mean, don't see the problem in spending a lot of money on a large higher education system. We have lots and lots of young people going to the education more than any point in our that history. That wasn't the point of the system. Um, and all that and seems that to have happened is you've moved the burden of cost, but you haven't actually necessarily at this point put any more money into the system. It wasn't supposed to cost more. So in that sense, has it failed? Well, in one sense, the burden of cost hasn't, hasn't changed. I mean, if it's indeed the case that government is going to lose a lot of money on these loans, then these are still publicly funded university places. Um, the reality is the students are not paying anything on the way in. The numbers of people going to university is increasing again. And fees has having done nothing. Having to, gone down, of and course. fees has done nothing to put off people from learning. I them. mean, it is true that the numbers have gone down, not as um, the, to the to the extent that was predicted by people like yourself. So, in a way. Doesn't that vindicate the system if the numbers are going back up again? We were always very clear that uh, this might not put off students immediately from going into higher education. What we have seen is a 40% drop in part-time students and a 14% drop in mature students. And these are people that are reskilling and retraining to perform vital jobs in, in this economy. And what's really clear is that students are paying for this debt three times over. They're paying in high debt, they're paying uh, for decades after they graduate, and they're also paying in tax to fund to, to subsidise this unsustainable system. Do you think it's a good system? Does it improve the standard of our higher education? Okay, well, <coughs> if I was I'm slightly taken aback by the fact that I used to occupy <laughs> yes, Megan's you position. You did, indeed. As any Many years did. before she was actually born, so I'm slightly <laughs> silenced at the moment. Has this brought you back <laughs> to a past life? Okay, well, look, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that uh, whichever system we take, it's, it's a bit better than it was then when most students were subject to discretion, local authority discretion, which meant most of them didn't get grants. However, having said that, I, I, I rather favour the older NUS position, which was for the graduate tax, because the argument about all of this is that students need to make more in contribution to higher education. And my view is the graduate tax is fairer, it's simpler, you know, it's it's... It's more logical, based on the proposition, that if you get a degree, you're likely to earn more. And the, the, prob the reason that people went for so fees... that's not guaranteed, is it's not, it? Well, it, overall it's true. The reason people went for a fee system and loans rather than graduate tax was the idea that you'd have to pay back a lot more under the graduate tax, and then also the fee system would encourage universities to compete. Well, the truth is, all the universities pay charge more or less 9,000. There's no particular competition. Yeah, so the competition's disappeared. I mean, what is wrong with the graduate tax? 
So the problem with the graduate tax is that we have all the best features of a graduate tax in the current system. Repayments are linked to your income, but a graduate tax would be uncapped. You'd, you'd, you'd keep paying um, even after you'd met the cost of your higher education. The advantage of a fee system is that the, the cost that you pay is ultimately capped. And it also has the benefit that it has the potential to create more competition between universities. And what the government's recently announced is that the controls on student numbers are about to be lifted, which should mean that there's much more extensive competition between universities for students. Right, because that's the problem. There isn't a competition at the moment, is there? And a lot of these universities would like to charge more, wouldn't they? Than 9,000. Eventually, they would like to charge more. Well, I think, I, I think right. before that happens, we'll start to see some universities charging less to get more students. All right, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you both very much. Now, let's get back to...